Hey, what's going on, guys? Thanks for checking out the channel. Tobin here with you. Appreciate you guys. If you guys could subscribe, I would uh, really appreciate that. We'll be having plenty of content uh, all throughout the NBA playoffs. And, of course, uh, you guys know, I give you a lot of content every week. And, of course, I can't wait to get in today. It's a rainy day, but, uh, you know, up early. Drinking me coal for drinking me, uh, I don't know why I went British accent there. <laughs> Terrible British accent there. Drinking uh, some Cafe Bustelo, revved up to go uh, see Leroy in just a matter of hours today. We'll be on 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Watch live today, all right? You're going to want to be tuned in live on uh, 560's YouTube page. And if you can't be in live, then go back and watch it uh, on demand all four hours. We'll put on clips as well. Um and lots of fun to get to here, man. Uh, but but some bad news, some bad news to uh, to bring up when it comes to the Miami Heat. Uh, last night, as after I put up my recap, we got the uh, diagnosis on Tyler Hero's hand. Uh, he's got two fingers broken on his shooting hand, and he's gonna be out four to six weeks. Which, man, like that's that's just you just feel terrible for the guy because. For a couple reasons, man. Like, first of all, Tyler Hero, very important to this team. You're talking about one of the leading scorers on this team. And it just can be, as Spo uses the term, very ignitable. Um, a guy who is really good at getting Bam out of bio the basketball. A guy who can have the confidence to shoot him. How many times this year, even when he was going bad, Tyler Hero would come through in big clutch moments for Miami. And he's really been doing that since he was a teenager for Miami. You know, the 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 the, the grapefruits on this kid, or as uh, John Calipari would say, the, the the giant elephant balls on Tyler Hero. It uh to to lose that for a real significant part of the postseason is absolutely crushing. I mean, we're talking four weeks, four to six weeks. So on the good end, you know, we're talking middle of May probably the end of May. And so you're talking at best conference finals, most likely if the Heat were to make it all the way to June to an NBA finals run, they'd get him back. So, I mean, just an absolute crusher, an absolute crusher. Because, you know, recently, it's not like Miami hasn't had injury trouble in their past playoff runs. They have. I mean, you think about last year, Kyle Lowry and everything they had to deal with with him and that really was an all throughout the playoff thing but it, there wasn't a real finality of it you know Kyle was dealing with some stuff and then it was like you know he'd be in he'd be out he just wasn't quite the same but even Kyle like would come through like game six of the Eastern Conference Finals was able to push through and though like his numbers didn't look good he was he made an important impact and so Tyler's going to be in the spot it's what do you do it's your shooting hand it's his mother bleeping shooting hand so, you know, much like Duncan Robinson, uh, when he had his thumb surgery, like, I guess Tyler's going to be able to stay in shape. Um, so, like, when he's ready to go, maybe he'll be ready to go. But it's a long playoff journey all throughout. I mean, first of all, you're talking about you got to get through this juggernaut as it is. And then likely two more rounds with Adam. And you just 20 points a game, just gone like that, where you know, you're already a team that struggles to score. Like, that's the facts of it. So how Miami is able to get passes, it's going to be a hurdle. It's going to be it's going to be a, a tough one to figure out, and I don't, I don't really know. And I, and I just feel bad for Tyler for a couple of reasons. One, I mean, first of all, this is, a, you know, this is, had to be a, a fun matchup he was looking forward to uh, against his hometown team. They mentioned that um on the broadcast early on and just that he gets this opportunity to do this in front of uh family and friends and all that type of stuff so he he loses that chance but more importantly you know Tyler talks so much uh in the po in the in the preseason about you know wanting to get that opportunity again in the postseason and, and getting that chance to to prove that he is a, a guy capable of of rising to the occasion of the playoffs just like he did when he when he walked into the league um and really wanted to i think erase some of the uh the stink that was last year and uh this might have been you know a, a favorable matchup for him schematically and just to lose him like that just it just it sucks man i i don't know uh, a more eloquent way to put it and you know 
you just feel for him, man. You really, really do because this, to, like I was saying with injuries, like Miami had the Lowry thing, which was kind of on and off. Then you had the Goron thing, but that happened. I mean, like, the Goron injury happened in the finals, you know, and the Bam injury happened in the finals. So those injuries, you got to a mount point, and then you're like, all right, how do we adjust from this? And you knew you were kind of effed anyway, uh, and then you got some Jimmy Butler heroics, but, like, you weren't going through the playoff run as it was. You, of course, like, f- you know, fans will remember back uh, to Chris Bosh's time where Chris Bosh got hurt in the uh, in the 2012 finals and was dealing with, like, an abdominal thing, and, and he didn't come back until the Eastern Conference finals after losing him in, uh, I think it was game, was it game one again? I can't remember if it was game one or game two against the Pacers. But then, of course, uh, Dexter Pittman inf- infamously uh, started the next game. And, whoa, that was a tough one. Um, and then Chris Bosh comes back, starts hitting threes, and and obviously was a huge part. So maybe Tyler will have that kind of a, a, a storybook ending here where, you know, he'll be able to come back. But this one in itself right now, just uh, just a tough one to, uh, to deal with. And, I, and look, from a from the perspective of the Niners, they're not going to give Miami any grace on this. You know, like to lose, they didn't give them grace when they lost Goran Dragic, who was their leading playoff scorer that year, and that band was playing with one arm. And so, Miami, everybody's going to say the the term "next man up." It was actually funny. I was, I was watching the uh, the recap before I got on today of uh, TNT. And like they just showed a montage, like Bam said, next man up. Drew Holiday said, next man up, because obviously they lost Giannis. And Chuck said a funny thing where he goes like, "Yeah, but next man up doesn't apply to everybody, and certainly not for Giannis. I mean, like you're talking about, you know, the MVP. Like they don't have anybody to replace him. Can Miami figure out a way to replicate Tyler's production?" I mean, if there was going to be any one of their top three guys that was gone, this might be the guy that they could at least buoy for a little bit because you could gimmick with some shooters. If Kevin Love can do what he did this last game, if he could keep that up in any way, shape, or form, I think you'll be – I think I think you still have a fighting chance. I think you still have a fighting chance. You know, if it was Bam – you know, to to you, you see like he's gonna be such a key defensively in this series and, and especially with I'm gonna be daring him to shoot and give him that advantage. And then Jimmy, obviously, I mean, like you lose Jimmy, you know, you would be f- so I think uh with Tyler, it's gonna be interesting for a couple standpoints. Who's gonna start? You know, do they when they when they started the second half, they started Duncan. So is it a situation where they'll start Duncan again? I don't think so. Um, would they start Kevin Love? That would be an interesting one. I mean, do they start Kevin Love off the jump? Or do they go with Kyle Lowry? Do they go with Caleb Martin? Like, I think those are probably the uh, the most likely guys. Like, you're going to take one of those key role guys and and give him the start. And I would say probably Duncan is going to get into the rotation now. If I had to, if I had to, get, I mean, maybe based on how the game is going, they'll uh, they'll figure that out. But you know, you looked at yesterday's game and the box score that went down yesterday. The Heat played nine guys, but Duncan he just had that spot area. But Love, Martin, Lowry were your guys off the bench, so you got to insert one of those guys. And I would say. Likely Duncan will get uh, some minutes then thereafter. So I don't know, man. That's an interesting one because if you're going to go Struess and Gabe as your backcourt, pretty much, which is something that pretty you know that they're pretty familiar with that from the playoffs. It would seem like Martin or Love would be the way to go. Um, I don't think that you put Lowry in the backcourt to start the game. I think that uh. You know, I like the I like what he's bringing from the uh, from the standpoint of settling things down and being in the being in those uh, those key spots. Um, but that's gonna be an interesting question that Spoh's got to answer. You know, who does he who does he give that spot to? I would say he's probably gonna ride the hot hand of love. I think that between the rebounding, um, the spacing that he was able to give you, maybe you ride Kevin Love shooting hot right now a little bit. But Spoh said this like, look, whatever does end up happening. Um, they got a tough one coming in on Wednesday. I'll get to that in just a second, but uh, let's get to uh, some of the sound from the uh, th- from the guys after the game. And this was uh, 
This was Jimmy Buckets afterwards on Tyler Hero's injury. Yeah, um, a lot. You you can't, you know, fully make up what Tyler has been for our team all year long. <clears throat> but guys got to step up, including myself, including Bam, um, and whoever Spo calls upon to do an offensive assignment, a defensive assignment, to bring some energy to dive on the floor, get a loose ball, a rebound. Um, it's like all hands on deck at all times, um, and now more than ever. I mean, yes, dive and get on the floor, but, like, also be careful because that's what Tyler was trying to do. And, God, like, I'm trying to think, like, when's the last time I – my shout-out to uh, RTD. He gave this term to me yesterday on uh, on text. He goes, is this the first culture injury that we can remember? Like, just a, just a, a, a devastating injury all based on the Miami Heat. Like, your heart – I always say, you know, my heart was in the right place. Heart, Tyler's heart was in the right place. His heart was in the right place. Diving out, all effort. And you still saw it like Jimmy had one of those big plays yesterday. I don't remember. Was he tipping it to? I think it was tip, he tipped it to Gabe. Maybe it was Caleb. I can't remember. But uh, he had one of those where he dove on the floor, tipped, and it ended up being a three. Like you're trying to those extra plays. Miami really was so good in that, so good in that this uh, this past game on uh, on what they were dealing with. But this was uh, this is this is definitely a tough one to swallow, man. It's it, it sucks. It really sucks. I mean. You know, the biggest thing is he had a smile on his face and he wasn't discouraged about what happened to him. Uh, you can tell he's still on in to the team. And, you know, I feel like that's the biggest the biggest thing he could bring to the team at the W. Yeah, they showed some video of uh, off court when Tyler was uh, when Tyler, you know, was uh, greeting his team as they were coming out. He had like a monster cast on his hand. So really is just a uh, just a huge, uh, huge, huge bummer to, to have that going forth. And, uh, and to have to deal with it. But that is what it is right now. And as far as the Heat is concerned, uh, Eric Spolstra said afterwards he was in the uh, the Heat locker room. And I thought that he, uh, he put it well when he described what the Miami Heat are about to face. Because I mentioned this a little bit in the last video, but you know that uh, it's going to be an absolute, it's going to be a monster that they're going to have to take on on Tuesday, on, uh, on Wednesday night. Like, they, the... The Bucks are coming, and they're bringing haymakers. Like, that, that is definitely the case. This was Spell in the locker room afterwards. Yeah. Uh, all the way across the board, everybody's minutes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Maddie, uh, and just, uh, a lot of toughness. We're going to be dealing with a hurricane uh, coming at us on Wednesday, but we'll figure that out. Good win, man. Love. Yeah, yeah. 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 Decorated veteran. Lead us, Kevin. Take us there. <laughs> Family on three. One, two, three. There you go. Kevin Love was a monster yesterday. He really was, and he's going to be huge if the Heat have any chance of uh, dealing with this Tyler Hero injury. Uh, Kevin Love continuing to uh, bring what he was uh, was is is going to be absolutely huge. And look, he was uh, he was a monster. Playoff Kev, as uh, as Max Struess was putting it, and uh, everybody giving him a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, crap there, which is fun. I, I think the Heat. They came into this one, and Kyle mentioned this in the locker room afterwards. Like they can play a little free and easy. They played free and easy, but they they played free and easy, but they played hard. They played hard, and this is uh, this is why you want to get in the playoffs, man. Because you know, you know, as they say, you don't root for injuries, but maybe something breaks your way. And Giannis wasn't able to get through the game, and, I, and maybe they would have won anyway. I'm not saying that they wouldn't have. They were they were playing well with Giannis out there for the brief time that he was. Um, but they certainly didn't look intimidated. I'll say that. They didn't look intimidated outside of like, you know, Bam being a little bit frazzled early on offensively. And I don't even think he was frazzled because he was aggressive. He was just missing. So that's probably the wrong way to put it. But um, outside of Bam not having that touch early, I mean, that's why I said that. I thought that was one of the biggest things out of yesterday's game is by by the end of that game, he had a lot of confidence in his shot. And if he has that going forward, if they have that from Bam going forward, um, and, and Jimmy obviously plays like playoff Jimmy. If Jimmy plays like one of the best players on the planet, they have a shot. I really think that. I really do. And, you know, now they're in this spot where they have a big injury that they have to overcome. Um, I'm sure that Wednesday night is going to be a barrage from downtown. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking like, I'm thinking they got a lot of threes they got to make up from, from, from uh, Milwaukee. Milwaukee's a good three-point shooting team. They shoot a lot of threes. And they uh, they were not on today. So 
uh, Miami is going to have an uphill climb as it is. I think, you know, just that typical bounce back, a little bit of desperation from a top seed. So whatever happens on Tuesday, Tuesday's still a big game. Like, look, you literally could take that series and put it in the palm of your hands. You take two road games. Um, that's an absolute huge, huge opportunity. But you did what you were supposed to do already. So whatever happens, you lose by 30 the next game. You did what you were supposed to do. So don't get discouraged by whatever happens on Wednesday night. Remember, Heat Nation, remember what playoff basketball is. All right? This is, uh, this is the fun of it. And you get to soak it in for a couple of days, which is great.